and today I'm going to present you the Leica M6 Rangefinder camera. So it's a camera that was uh, produced between 1984 and 2002, uh, for which the production started again in 2022. So the interesting thing with the M6, it's kind of mythical because it's the last fully mechanical um, camera from uh, Leica with all the speeds non-dependent on a battery to to actually work. The only thing the battery does is, um, the battery goes here, is give you an indication of the exposure um, inside the viewfinder. So the M6 had mm, different iterations, different variants uh, during the years. That's an M6 TTL uh, version with the TTL flash uh, capabilities. And a small detail for this one too, uh, it's a 085 um, viewfinder lens, uh, which makes it more suited for uh, lenses like 50 millimeters. Uh, this, um, this uh, how do you say, um, factor will depend on your preferences. Uh, you will go for a 072, for example, if you prefer a 28 millimeters and things like that. But anyways, um, to put the lens on, that's pretty easy. So you go here. Actually, we can check something out. Um, exposure is made by light reflecting on this white point and the sensor, which is by back there. And that's how uh, the camera gives you indication on the exposure time. And here, that's one lens. Um, that's a 35 millimeter. So I will have in my viewfinder some uh, guides that will appear inside. Uh, that's the magic of ranch finders. Uh, you don't see directly through the lens. But yeah, so... To put the film in, you open it up like this, old school. Here it goes. That's where the film goes. Pretty simple. Works all, works all the time. And that's it. Where We have the film sensitivity indication here uh, for the electronic parts of the camera, but non necessary um, on this fully mechanical uh, camera. Let's go through a few image examples now. The Leica M6 was basically what you could do best in terms of uh, telemetric uh, cameras. Uh, on the opposite to the reflex camera where you would see in your, in your viewfinder uh, the actual image going through the lens, um, rangefinder cameras use a combination of prism and optical lenses to let you focus... Um, on the plane you're interested in, where the subject is. Uh, basically, everything is has a double image except for the plane which is in focus when you're using a telemetric uh, camera. And that's because the viewfinder is, rangefinder is linked mechanically to the lens by a simple but very precise mechanism. But then, even so, you're you have something that's manual, the, the focus is really precise, uh, maybe apart from very open lenses like below 1.4, uh, it's pretty hard to miss your focus if you really look at this double image. Uh, one small detail too is because it's uh, an external viewfinder, depending on the focal lens you'll have guides on the viewfinder and you won't have the exact same uh, framing of the image, obviously because you're slightly, your viewfinder is going to slightly be on the side. Uh, that's what happens on the M6. So those are my pictures taken with the M6. Actually, the first on the left is the first picture I ever took with an M6 uh, using black and white Burger Pancro 50 film. Um, Really, the capacity of the of this camera makes it really something fun to use. It's a, it's an experience. It's sensual. It's very simple. You just look at uh, the indication uh, in the viewfinder of the exposure. Um, the the meter is really precise on the M6. Very reliable. And then you set your speeds. Everything else is manual. Very simple controls. It becomes very intuitive, very fast, and then you can focus on what you want to, to frame. Um, those pictures are still with the with the Pancro 50 film. Um, and because the camera is pretty compact, looks like kind of looks like an old camera. Uh, even the first models, even if the first models are are starting to be old, 
Uh, people don't really mind you. It's not as visible as one of those big cameras. And the lenses and, and the compatible range are, you have some really great lenses for many um, lens builders, uh, uh, Voigtlander, Leica, of course, uh, but, but many more. And it's a, it's a really nice and discreet way of taking pictures. Again, the, the metering is really precise on the M6. Um, here it's with uh, Ferrania P30 film, uh, which is a, a film was originally used in black and white cinema in the 1950s in Italy, but um, it's not that, uh, how do you say, permissive uh, on your exposure, so you really need something precise to make your a, a good shot, otherwise it's really underexposed or overexposed. So this camera is really precise, gives you a good indication, you can rely on it. And um, yeah, that's that's also uh, maybe it's interesting to talk about that. Uh, having a film camera lets you basically change your sensor. If it was a digital camera, it was it would be like changing your sensor every time. Um, here it's Kodak Color Plus 200 film, uh, expired since probably 20 years, so the colors are kind of bit a bit off, but really gives you a different uh, image rendering. And that was during a road trip. Um, Again, because it's a very compact camera, the lens system is pretty compact too. It's really easy to bring with you on a traveling, uh, for example, that was a road trip. Uh, or if you have a main work doing digital photography with a larger camera or a different system, um, it's a really practical camera. Uh, again, here that's black and white, going back to black and white, Kentmare 100 film. Um, this is a very simple to use camera, which gets very intuitive very fast. It's a very organic experience. So you basically, my experience was really feeling, just look, thinking about uh, the scene, um, how I would construct it, and and yeah, again those those images. Uh, very interesting camera to use. Everything's very or organic again. Um, here on the left, Kentmare 100 film, uh, again. On the right, that's Phantom 8 film, a very different way to react uh, with light. Uh, found it pretty hard to use, but that's one of the results. Uh, again, interesting to have a camera like this because you can really check very weird films, weird in a creative way. That's Those two pictures are Fuji Eterna 500D uh, movie stock film, um, it's basically film made for movies, which you can't develop with C41, usual C41 process. But you get a very different color rendering and very different grain. Um, it's very organic. And it's, that's something you can't get with digital. You can try to simulate it, but it's not the same experience. Here again, another film, Fuji Riala 500D. Also Cine film uh, meant for movies. Um, but yeah, so overall... The, the M6 is an experience which is quite organic, quite intuitive. Um, if you like uh, range finder focusing and like the manual experience and want to go for film, uh, it's a marvelous camera to use. A few more details about the M6. So the version I have here that I'm holding in my hands is an M6 TTL, as I said before. Uh, one difference with the new production from 2022 is basically this version I'm holding uh, had a larger uh, uh, wheel to select the speed, um, which is was smaller in the first version. And this new production from 2022 is referring to the first version, so it's going to be smaller. Um, one other thing is, uh, for those who are, who are interested, is you can add actually, um, if you want a, a fully motorized um, um, option, you can actually change the, the bottom part and have this uh, um, help motorized help. That's like a more M uh, version. Makes it makes your camera bigger, but if you're interested, could be useful. Um, you, however, can't. Get it, get it off if you have a film inside because it will uh, reveal the film, except if you have a black uh, room. But yeah, anyhow. Uh, also, one small other detail is uh, the original M6 were in zinc, um, as the new one is supposed to be in bronze. Mm -hmm.